you know, we were talking a little while earlier about uh, on the process of job creation, and I understand that there is a multiplier effect given the increased spend in CapEx. But apart from that, is there anything new or different or anything that encourages uh, job creation in the economy? So, Vishnu, I think as you uh, mentioned in the first part of your question, um, job creation happens in an economy when uh, sectors that are actually far more intensive in creating jobs are the ones that are, you know, uh, fostered. Um, and if you look at this year's budget, and this has been a theme that has continued uh, since the, you know, the, la for the last three years, uh, the emphasis on, uh, on on public capital expenditures um, and public capital expenditures, uh, you know, especially creates jobs in the construction sector. Uh, and that was the reason why, in fact, this was started during the COVID period, because the urban, uh, you know, poor were, were significantly impacted. Um, so I think the emphasis on that is something that will definitely create jobs. And it has already been creating jobs. If you look at the actual data, you know, uh, um, and, and reliable government data, you know, from the NSSO, which is a PLFS, you can see that all the metrics, whether it is the worker, you know, population ratio, whether it is the labor force participation ratio or the unemployment ratio, each one of them have actually recovered, you know, beyond the pandemic. Um, so the clearly data suggests that this is something that has already worked, you know, emphasis on public capex is creating employment and therefore the government has redoubled on it. And I think which is very good news. If we talk about inflation going forward um, in terms of uh you know, the actual inflation as it emerges over the uh, next year, what are some of the, the projections? What are some of the concerns? Because that's not really been listed. There are macroeconomic factors as well which might affect inflation. So what would the actual inflation be? No, there's a reason why inflation actually is not mentioned in the budget uh, because now you know a large contributor to inf to you know prices is basically the indirect tax which gets covered under GST uh, and that's therefore it doesn't uh, you know sort of uh, make sense for the budget to get into the inflation aspect. But I would definitely mention that uh, you know this is something that had been cover has been covered in previous economic surveys uh, that when you have asset creation in the economy when the supply side of the economy is worked on you know what you get is actually lower price. And that's been clearly shown, uh, you know, during the COVID period, India has, has had the twin benefit of actually much higher growth and much lower inflation compared to the advanced economies. And that is because of the uh, supply side, uh, you know, uh, emphasis. And I think that has been continued now with the public capex now uh, a 33 percent growth and overall, uh, you know, uh, a 4.5 percent of GDP when you include the incentives that have been provided for states to do this as well. So I think overall, um, you know, in an environment where the advanced economies are facing anywhere between two and a half to four times the historical inflation. India at about 70 percent is in very comfortable zone and I don't see this uh, budget as being inflationary at all. A final question. The opposition has been saying not enough has been done to create jobs. We've discussed that to tackle Mehengai. That's uh, something we've also partly discussed. But the other point is, has it done enough to stem inequality? Rahul Gandhi, for example, tweeting 1% of the richest own 40% of the wealth, 50% of the poorest pay 64% of GST, 42% of the youth are unemployed. Has this been addressed? So, um, you know, these are political rhetoric, uh, Vishnu, that, you know, I would rather focus on the economics. Um, there was a, a very nice uh, report that was done by SBI, which looked at the inequality post the pandemic uh, using actual data. And they have found that inequality has indeed decreased, not not increased. Um, and, you know, when you create jobs uh, for the you know middle class, for the you know working population, that is something that actually, you know, really works on reducing inequality because there is nothing better than a job in the formal sector to actually, you know, uh, improve, Im improve both the economic and the social condition of not just the individual, but the entire family of four or five people. So I think as we've discussed earlier, the emphasis on public capex and through that the impact on employment, which has already been seen in the data, if you actually look at reliable data, I think that clearly suggests that this is something that will really, you know, work on reducing inequality, definitely not increasing. I think, you know, some of what you're talking about is just, you know, empty rhetoric. All right, Dr. Subramanian, thanks very much for joining us, sharing your views on a couple of aspects of the budget.